Hello everyone, and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim, where I am in the midst of Hurricane Helena, here to investigate it in my godfriend's F4F Wildcat. Apparently there's some other flight traffic around here at Tampa, and it's a gloomy day, but I did set the time to not be real time, so that we could see some things, otherwise it'd be nighttime here, because I am flying at what would be 8 o'clock at night, East Coast time. And taking off, I have uh, about a 30 knot headwind right now. Well, I th that's the sound of the gear retracting in this Scott Friends F4F Wildcat. Let me get a map here so you can see the situation, especially the wind situation. Might take some time to pop up. There we are. So, 40 knot, oh, it says tailwind there. Oh no, that's because I'm heading south, all right. So, 40 knot headwind. And this plane can't go very fast, but that's part of the interesting part. So, out from Tampa. And if I get the game's regular map here, I've got it plotted to the eye of the storm. So, we need to go a little bit north of west. And there's my F4F. Wow, 70 knots already here in Tampa. I've got my track IR on. Now, of course, a uh, more appropriate plane might be a P3 Orion or something like that. One of the Hurricane Hunters. But I figured a little Navy plane, perhaps a bit lost, uh, would be a good thing too. I mean, an old Navy plane, obviously. I wanted a plane that would really feel the storm's forces, and this surely is a thing. I could probably go just straight west, because I'm going to be pushed north at a rate of 78 knots. So I don't think I actually need to go north at all. In fact, I might want to go south a little bit in order to make it to the eye. So about 3,700 feet it seems, but we do have to take into consideration the pressure where right now it's at 991 it says. I don't want to get too much higher than this. Current indicated airspeed's 212 knots. It's got to take a little bit for me to get to the eye, but we'll see the various portions of the storm, but clearly Tampa's already getting quite a lot of it. Now I don't have a P3 Orion or a C-130 or anything like that. Uh, I do The best I've got as far as that sort of class of plane is the DC-6, which is a very nice plane. But, and I have flown through Hurricanes in flight sim with it as we get firmly above 80 knots here and there's a clearing here. I'm still at 3,900 feet. It actually set the barometric pressure down on that thing. It seems to be reading 29.33 as opposed to normal 29.92. The real pressure is 29.25, so it set it to where it was at Tampa instead of going with the standard pressure. Okay, went too far north. 92 knots now. I was tempted to do this in a Cessna because there would potentially be the situation where I'd be physically standing still over the ground. The ground speed would be zero. But I probably want to actually be able to land eventually. Normally I'd be a lot closer to the eye before getting these kinds of speeds. Uh, it keeps turning me. Maybe I can get some rudder in. left. Okay, past 100 knots here on the wind speed, straight north. Past 110, a little bit there. You can sort of see by the waves below that I'm being pushed sideways. I I'm trying to go 
westward, but I'm actually being pushed net northwest. And you can see the wind being uh, very aggressive and pushing me northward. And again, we'll certainly know where the eye is by the way the wind speeds change. We know we haven't approached it yet because the wind, or well, the wind direction changes especially, but also of course the drop in pressure and it'll be a sudden drop in wind speed when we actually enter the eye. So the pressure is now below 29 inches of mercury, we're at 28.89. It seems like God friends uh, who made this plane are very much involved in Flight Sim 2024 development stuff. So, well, that's good. Look forward to what they come up with there. Yeah, gusts are serious now. Peaking at 120 knots. I've seen some lightning, but I haven't heard any thunder. Okay, brief 130s there. I thought about flying in a P-38 because I haven't flown that in a while, but I thought a Navy plane would be better. Well, plenty of planes around here. Checking out the storm. Okay, yeah, really shaking things up here now. Oh, there might be another gap here. looks a little bit less than wow okay let me turn off my head tracking so that you know that it's not my head bobbing around and it is in fact the plane um, yeah let me adjust my altimeter again because the C looked a little bit less than 3000 to me uh, it's tough to get to the altimeter calibration now uh, okay I'll stop <laughs> Okay, I'll, ju I'll just figure it out in my head. All right. Let's go up a bit. We'll just go up in order to get some buffer. So about 120 at the top of the gusts. There's a sort of void here. Wind speed hasn't changed. I mean, wind direction hasn't changed. But this could be an eye. But we'll see if there's a drop in speeds here. My plan is to land at Tallahassee International. Wanted to go to Pensacola, but I think it'll be more dramatic if I head to Tallahassee since that's where the storm is heading. So, and as always, I hope everybody is staying safe. Only try to weather the storm in flight in the sim <laughs> feel like this is one thing the sim is for you definitely don't want to be doing this in real life I mean unless it's your job as a hurricane hunter and you're in a P3 or something like that or C-130 this is a broad clear area but I'm not sold on the idea that it's the eye yet however if we look here I mean, the, the location of the planes really suggests that this is close to the eye, though. But where I plotted is the source of that pink-purple line. So that's a little bit further along. Of course, it could have moved since then. The wind direction has changed, though. It's getting more and more eastward. And the wind is slower here. I'm still hanging out at 3,200 ish feet. Well, now it's barely hitting the 100 knot mark on the wind speeds. So, but basically, I'm only going at 100 knot ground speed. So, not great. Here's how I look right now. Well, I'm guessing this is the eye. It's a pretty big eye. 
But maybe it only feels big because with the wind in my face, I'm not going that fast. Pressure has been at about 963 according to this. 28.43 inches of mercury. Well, insofar as this might be the eye, the wind speeds in it have not been particularly slow. They're slower than what we saw in the midst of the clouds earlier, when the wind was pointed northward. And now it's got turned southward, so this is, this is the eye, but it's a fairly quick, quick eye. An eye with fairly fast wind speeds. Well, it's getting cloudier over here. Speed's still not as high as on the other side. And not fully southward yet. As far as where I plotted the eye, we're just about there. Okay, now the wind speeds are going down. Okay, that broad belt of of nothing, the void earlier it was not the eye. Maybe we were approaching it more now. But I mean, still the wind speed changed. But I think that's just because we went from being on the east side of the storm to being on the north side of the storm. It means that the eye is a little bit further south, so I'm gonna try and see about that. I'm a little bit high here too. Oop, still ending up going up here. Alright, are you and I? Well, there's a rainbow. <laughs> well, we can't have crossed the eye because the wind direction has not changed, you know, 180 yet. It did change about 90 degrees. It was basically northward at Tampa. until it actually gets southward. Well, I'll say this much, uh, since I got some altitude, I haven't really seen anything below 70 knots so far in this flight. Maybe there was a brief spurt. Well, I'm thinking there's more I like, but uh, uh, I can't say there's been anything definitive as far as that's concerned. Well, I didn't really get anything that made me go, yes, that's definitely the eye this time. But I've got to turn towards Tallahassee now. Well, I've been flying for a bit. It's almost 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Flight's been 46 minutes altogether so far. Well, the wind's not going to make it easy on me to get to Tallahassee because it's once again uh, right at me now. Not right at me, it's blowing me a little bit eastward as well. Alright, wind's picking up again on this side. Getting back into the 100 range a little bit. Okay, back up to 120, now on this side. Uh. Nope, slower now. Uh, oh, um, uh, oh, 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 some bad things happened to the plane. Ooh, what's that 200? Okay, that hopefully is the game doing weird thing. It's saying 300 there. Um, oh shoot, okay, I, I've been thrown into a very bad situation, <laughs> wait, it was, oh, uh, okay, uh, I just climbed like 5,000 feet, I'm at 8,000 now, even though I was trying to hold 3,000, um, well, there was a glitchy patch in the hurricane <laughs> in Flight Sim, I guess, because uh, if you saw the wind speeds there, it got up to 500 briefly. Uh, 
I better slow down, otherwise it's going to very much break the plane. Well, I haven't seen that one before. Well, I think we can safely call that an aberration. Fortunately, at Tallahassee International, there is a runway available that will give me a straight up headwind here. Uh, there are two runways at Tallahassee International and they're at a 90 degree angle to each other, so perfect. <laughs> I do not have to face a 100 knot crosswind or something like that, though of course at the surface it's less than that. But Oh, 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 hey, another weird 200 knot patch thing going there. Of course, since it's a headwind, it doesn't lead my plane to be going all that fast. It basically stops my plane then in its tracks with a headwind that fast. So, no problem as such. In real life, if something like that happened, it'd snap the plane in two and everything, but the sim doesn't know that. Well, according to uh, update from National Hurricane Center at 6.20 p.m. Eastern Time, so a couple of hours ago, uh, it said that maximum sustained winds increased to 130 miles per hour. That more or less tracks. We were seeing pretty solid, like uh, 110 to 130 on the Tampa side and minimum central pressure decreased to 947 millibars or 27.96 inches so it seems like the sim has gotten that right that seemed to be the lowest that I saw as well we are much higher than that right now 28.7 and increasing as we get closer to the coast and further away from the eye of course, knots, uh, 110 knots is 125 miles an hour. I do wonder how well x 12 models these weather events. Not entirely sure. I certainly hope uh, Flight Sim 2024 does a better job. It seems like they'll be trying to. Well, the wind has definitely changed now. It's heading more westward now. Wonder if it'll end up having turned 100, uh, 360 degrees. It started out north. We've covered about 225 degrees of wind change, wind direction change. Well, it doesn't seem like the faster speeds have gotten to this part of the Gulf of Mexico yet. Probably by the time I post any video on this, the storm will already have progressed and hopefully cleared even. Well, probably not by that time. But I certainly hope everybody stays safe. If I decide to fly through a hurricane in flight sim, you know it's a nasty one. It's a fair sign that it's a very horrible hurricane. And I'm actually changing which runway I'm going to be heading into. I will head to the east-west one instead of the north-south one. I think that'll be a better plan. Runway 9 seems like a better idea right now. Oh, the clouds cleared just in time for me to see the coast. Good times. Nine twenty three PM Eastern Time. Obviously the sun would not be like this. I decided I wanted to be able to see some things, so I changed the time. Okay, I bite I'll I'll try for runway thirty six. It's gonna be like this.
Ooh, now it's getting faster over here. 384. Oh, now, now we're getting 100 knot here? Okay. Well, it looks like it's already hitting over here. Nope, that's just changing quite a lot. Now I completely changed direction, too. Okay. Ooh, I am plunging down. Well, it's making it hard for me to decide which runway I'm going to go into, so I'm just going to fly straight in runway 36 and hope that the wind ends up in a direction that makes that not the right, wrong choice. Uh, or maybe, maybe uh, having a serious crosswind will be entertaining. Who knows? Oh, maybe a break in the clouds here that might be to our benefit. It's good timing if it holds. And the gear takes a bit to drop. Uh, let me see if I can do it already or not. Okay, it's going out. <laughs> Ooh. It is a headwind though, so that's good. I think I see some lights over there. Is that my runway? Probably. <laughs> Probably my runway. Okay. That's a runway alright. Seems like they're indicating high. Oh, I guess I am high. Huh. Oop, now I'm low. Oh, there's an airliner. Hold on. I'll pass that first. Oop. I'm doing the tail dragger thing where I always hop a lot. I, I don't even know what the stall speed of this is, so... It's got a really thin wheelbase, too. Eek. Oh, okay, I can't see over in this view. <laughs> Just realized that. Okay, can I turn this? Uh, okay, 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 okay. I've turned this taxiway. Okay, don't flop. All right. Okay, steer, steer. I've made it to Tallahassee International. And maybe I should turn this way so I'm... But being in the wind might not be the best thing. Hmm. Well, I'll probably need some sort of anchor to tie me down. Oh boy. Okay, stop, stop. There's enough wind, the wind could probably lift me up. Alright, well, I should turn off the lights or something, but... Well, that has been my flight through Hurricane Helena. Uh, hour and a half. And... That was the Wildcat from Got Friends as well. With that, I'll say everyone stay safe. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.